Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we have a very special video where I am going to review this Monport laser. Now in the interest of full disclosure, Monport reached out to me. They asked me if I wanted to review this laser and of course I said yes. They provided it to me at no cost. However, they have no control over the editorial content of this video or my opinions and my experience with this laser laser cutter. So with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and break this video down in a series of steps. First, we're going to go ahead and talk about the specifications of this laser. Then we're going to jump into my unboxing and setup experience. Then we're going to talk about some of the pros that I found about the laser and then talk about some of the cons and then we will wrap it up. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into the specifications of the laser. All right, let's go ahead and get into the specifications of this laser. Now I have a list here so that I try not to forget anything. So I'm gonna run through it very quickly. So right off the bat, it is a 40 watt CO2 laser. So it is significantly more powerful than uh, most of the laser diodes that are out on the market. Well, in fact, all of the laser diodes that are out on the market. And because of that, it is on par with the Glowforge laser, which is very popular these days. All right, so what else do we have? We have a 9 by 12 cutting area. It does have a fixed focal point on the bed, which makes aligning it a little bit easier than some of the other lasers. As you can see, it is fully enclosed. It is a metal enclosure, and this enclosure is really nice. It is very well made. It, it doesn't have any dings or dents on it or anything like this, at least on the unit that I got. And so I'm really, really, really like this enclosure. It's a lot better than maybe the Ortor laser that I had that does not have an enclosure, so you have to wear the dog goggles and the glasses and things like this. So I definitely like the enclosure of this machine. It does have an exhaust uh, fan in the back with this uh, kind of hose that they provide here that uh, you're supposed to vent out into the open area, which is why I have it out here in the garage. It is water cooled, so the water runs through the laser. Uh, it does have an optional chiller. It does not come with a chiller, however. Uh, so I just have it in a bucket of water here. And then if the water gets a little bit too warm, I just put some uh, ice or some uh, other sort of things in there probably not the best thing to do so I do recommend the chiller but uh, that's what I do nevertheless. It does have some safety features where you open this door here uh, it will not run the laser while the door is open which is really awesome. It has an emergency stop button on here and then the power button here and some control features on the front. It does have a window here where you can see what's happening with the laser. It is that uh, colored plexiglass that protects your eyes so you don't have to wear uh, the safety goggles all the time or glasses in that way. So I I think that's some really nice features for this machine. Now the laser tube is in here in back and then the power and the water come out the back as well. So if you uh, don't have a location where you can easily access the back of the machine, which is where I originally had it upstairs, I do recommend some location where you can get all the way around the machine because you will be fiddling with the uh, things in the front and the back occasionally. So those are the features of the machine. I think that it's got a quite a large number of good features to it given its price point right around $500. Now it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that some of the other machines do. Of course they come at an additional cost so that's something to consider. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my setup experience with this laser. So first off the bat, uh, it got delivered. It comes in a fairly sizable box. Obviously, you do not have to assemble this at all. It is a metal enclosure, so the box is slightly larger than this enclosure. So it was a little awkward to get into the house. It was a little awkward to get into the room that I was initially going to do the evaluation in and then uh, dragging it back down here to the garage. But other than that, it was very well packaged. It actually was double boxed and it had a bunch of foam inside to keep the mechanics from jostling around and the associated parts that they give to you with the machine like the hoses and the pump and whatnot were all on the inside well 
well boxed. Uh, they were in some sort of a styrofoam and bubble wrap sort of packing material. So it was uh, it was very well put together. So the unboxing process was again very straightforward. Took it out of the box, opened it up, took everything out. There was nothing to put together. It is ready to go essentially out of the box. And so that's really cool. That's a big difference uh, compared to some of the laser diodes, which are kits you have to put them together. Now, most of the laser diodes that I have experience with and I've seen online uh, are not terribly difficult to assemble. It's not quite the, uh, you know, maybe uh, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 hours it might be for some of the 3D printers that are out there on the market. I have personal experience with those. Um, so this was really nice. Uh, you basically, you unboxed everything, you configured it, you followed the startup guide, you plugged it in, and it was ready to go right out of the box. So it was very straightforward. Now, it did, however, take me about two full days to get this machine operational. Now, that is my problem, not necessarily your problem. Why is that? Well, that turns out that the software that this machine runs on only runs on Windows. And so I do not have any Windows machines here in the house. And so if you have Windows, well, you should be ready to go. You just install the software and you should be good to go. And I will just say on behalf of all IT professionals in the world, if you have Windows, I'm really sorry. But if you have Macintosh, you gotta get some sort of Windows virtual machine. So it did take me a few hours to download the ISO, get a virtual machine set up and get it running. I will tell you, after I got everything installed in Parallels, I plugged the machine in and recognized it immediately. The software installed without any problems. So by that metric of success, if you have a Windows box, you should be up and running very quickly in a matter of you know maybe 30 minutes or so. Again, if you have a Mac, a little extra tries and tribulations, but again, I'm sorry if you have Windows. Wah, wah. <laughs> so after I got the software installed, I started actually trying to make some test cuts with it. It went okay. I will tell you that the software is a little quirky and I will get to the, some of the finer points about the software when we get into the pros and cons. I was getting really kind of odd results. The, the laser cutter was, was cutting, burning very hot in one corner and basically not at all in another corner. And so I went to the manual and it said maybe I needed to adjust my uh, laser uh, mirrors. And so I did the follow the procedure that I found in the manual and I actually watched a video online as well. Turns out my mirrors were not uh, adjusted properly. So after I went through the process of doing that, which was, uh, it was not difficult, but it was very tedious. So it was kind of painful in that regard. It did take a number of hours so that actually stretched my setup time into uh, like day three to get this machine up and running and then I started running a lot of different tests with the software and then that led to a whole series of other problems which I will talk about in a minute but overall uh, you know the setup was very straightforward I will say it was a little disappointing maybe that the mirrors weren't aligned as perfectly as maybe they could have been but but compared to some of the other machines I've used super easy to use super easy to set up super easy to get going overall so I mean that was my experience with the setup and the unboxing so pretty straightforward So let's talk about some of the pros of this machine. So right off the bat, you know, it's in this massive metal enclosure. So there's a lot of safety features that come with an enclosed laser like this, especially something that is 40 watts. And 40 watts is definitely a pro. It is significantly more powerful than one of the laser diodes. Most of the laser diodes are five to 10 watts. And so this is, you know, somewhere between four and, you know, eight times more powerful than one of those lasers. So it does have the ability to engrave, to cut materials that are a lot thicker than one of the laser diodes. And so, and again, because of the metal enclosure, it does evacuate fumes a little bit better. I will say the fan that comes with it is not terribly powerful, but we'll get to some of that in the con section. Uh, like I said, it has this emergency stop, which can be very helpful. It does come with software too. You do not have to buy any software. Now, I will get to the software in just a moment. 
because it's got software, you're up and running, you're ready to go, you're good to go right out of the box. And so that's really useful. I'm gonna compare and contrast to my Ortor laser that didn't come with any software. I had to go out and use Lightburn, ultimately ended up purchasing Lightburn because it really is a really great piece of software. But it was an added cost. I mean, it was only $60 on top of the money that I paid for the laser. But with this setup here for roughly around the same price of the Ortor laser, you get software and you get everything ready to go and you get a significantly more powerful laser. So that's really cool. And I think that is a major advantage over some of those diode lasers that are out on the market today. All right, so now that we kind of got the pros out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that I experienced with this machine in a little bit more detail. So right off the bat, like I mentioned earlier, the laser mirrors were not arranged in a suitable mechanism that allowed consistent cutting. Now that's really weird because I would expect this machine to come pre-tuned and more importantly though, the way the lasers needed to be adjusted, they clearly had adjusted them in some mechanism because they were all hot glued into place. And so when I followed the procedure in the manual and I realized that the first mirror that was down here, uh, which is the one closest to the tube, the laser beam was not hitting in the center, I was like, well, okay, let's just see how this goes. And I moved to the other mirror and it was further off. And then I moved to the furthest mirror, the one that's on the top of the laser cutter head, uh, and it was off as well. And then the beam was not coming through the center of the lens, which means it's probably not focusing properly. And so that was, again, a disappointment. So I did follow the process uh, to, to align the lasers. It took me about three or four hours. It, uh, again, it was not hard. It was just very repetitive and very tedious. I will say the manual says to take the double-sided tape, stick it on the mirror, hit the test burn, and allow the beam to hit the, the tape, and then you'll see whether or not it's in the middle or not. That's, that's fine, but what I found is it actually causes the tape to stick to the mirror. And so when you're all done, you have a bunch of mirrors that are all gooped up with tape, uh, which means they're not gonna cut very efficiently. So I basically, took out all the mirrors, I cleaned them very well. I went through the process of adjusting them following something that I saw online from one of the videos that they had, which is uh, creating a little ball uh, behind the tape so that it doesn't burn through and hit the mirror and that seemed to work better. All right, so the adjustment aside, uh, overall, uh, I am also still noticing that I was never able to get the beam directly through the center of the laser lens uh, on the nozzle. And because of that, I think I'm getting uh, inconsistent power results. I have noticed kind of uh, variabilities in where the head is, the amount of power that's coming out. Now, after I tuned it, it got a lot better. It's a little bit more consistent than it had been when I initially did it, but it is not perfect. Uh, and when I say perfect, I'm really comparing it to the Ortor laser, where the laser head is not bouncing the, the beam across a bunch of lasers. It's just right there, and it provides essentially consistent power no matter where the laser head is. So it's not probably not a fair comparison, but nevertheless, I would expect the power of the laser to be much more consistent across a nine inch by 12 inch, which is roughly 225 millimeters by 300 millimeters area. Um, I would just expect that power to be consistent across all of it. Now I did test two different materials. I tested cardboard and I tested a uh, wood, a uh, hardwood and plywood. I got, um, uh, better results with the plywood and the hardwood than I did with the cardboard, and I think that's the variability of the of the cardboard itself. But nevertheless, uh, I'm just not seeing as perfect results as I would want. The other con that comes along with this is because it is a fixed distance focal point at two inches it basically limits the thickness of the material that you can operate on to about three millimeters, which is about an eighth of an inch. And so initially I was using a, a three quarter inch piece of hardwood, which was not providing very good results. Uh, then I switched over the cardboard, which is a little bit more consistent with the proper height. And then I actually milled myself up a piece of wood, which was about an eighth of an inch. It was actually a little taller than an eighth of an inch. So I wasn't getting a uh, perfect focus, but I was getting better results with the thinner material. So now because of this, if you want to cut or you want to engrave something that is thicker than an eighth of an inch, 
or three millimeters, then you're kind of out of luck. There is a little well in the center here that you can remove the kind of center insert and you can put things in that are taller than that eighth of an inch, but it restricts your cutting area dramatically. Um, I don't remember the exact dimensions, but it's somewhere around six by four or something like that. So that's a major disappointment. I got a lot of things that I wanted to do with this machine, specifically a lot of engraving, which that's what I bought the Ortor for, but I thought this machine might do it faster, but because I'm limited to an eighth of an inch, I'm not really sure exactly how we're gonna use this machine other than maybe cutting out some parts. We'll see as uh, this evolves over time. The next area that I wanna cover for this machine is not about the hardware itself. It's about the software that comes with it. And so I mentioned the software is free and that's a serious pro. However, the software is very odd to use. I'm not gonna say that the software is garbage because it works. It connected to the machine right away. It started laser cutting. So it, it's not full of bugs per se, but it is certainly straight out of the 1990s. It, it, it's made for uh, Windows XP slash 2000 slash seven. It doesn't even list Windows 10 or Windows 11 for that matter on the uh, software splash screen that it launches. The splash screen only has a few English words in it. The rest of it is in Chinese, which is a little weird to me. And it's actually dated 2013. So let's do the math on that. That's a piece of software that was essentially released nine years ago. And so the fact that it actually works in, in the Windows 10 version that I have on a virtual machine, on my Macintosh, connecting it over USB is astounding actually to me. But the, the user interface is just, just very hard to understand. So you do some layout uh, on a canvas like you would expect. And then to do engraving, it opens another window which shows what you had on your canvas relative to your machine. And then you can jog your machine with a little, with a little pinpoint uh, like you can with uh, Lightburn. But it doesn't really tell you what the outline of the machine is. So you don't really know where you're putting your machine uh, head precisely. There, and there's no laser alignment on this specific unit. Uh, you can uh, get one of the units with that laser alignment dot, which I would highly recommend. So you'd have some sense of where the laser beam is gonna end up being. And if you do a test burn, for example, then you're gonna mark up your material, which you don't wanna do. So if you want to do some cuts that require some precision, you wanna do things over and over and over again, and you wanna place them in the same place over and over again, it's really hard to do. What I would recommend you do is you create some sort of jig that you stick inside and then you accurately dimension with the software which is not as easy as you would think it would should be and get everything working and get everything aligned i did have a bug in the software that i really couldn't figure out uh, i played around with it and i got it working but um, it, it would home properly and then i would i told it that the machine was essentially 300 by 225 but it would only allow me to jog about 95 millimeters down and about 120 millimeters over. I couldn't jog all the way to the end of the, the, the cutting area, which is actually where I had my material. And I played around with the offsets and the settings and a couple other things, and I was ultimately able to get it work once. I came back a few days later, I started doing some work, and then it was not working again. And I have no idea what I changed because I changed a bunch of stuff. And I followed the same sort of random procedure of just changing a bunch of stuff and suddenly sort of working again. So I have no idea why it will not initially understand what the entire size of the cutting area is, but it is what it is. The other downside of this machine that I just want to mention is the fact that you cannot control the power of the laser through the software, or at least the default software that comes with it. You have to control the power through this control panel here in the front, which means for any given operation that you are doing, the power is fixed. And so if you're just doing simple cutting or simple engraving, maybe that's not gonna to be too much of a problem. Uh, but if you do wanna get into some uh, lithograms and some um, sort, other sort of uh, laser engraving using images, for example, that might require dithering, uh, you do need to vary that power output. So you cannot do that with the default software and a default controller that comes with it. So you do have to upgrade the machine to the next uh, version that allows that to happen. So I, I don't wanna turn this into a gripe session about the software. Just know that it's not the best software on the market. 
And uh, after having received this machine, I was doing a lot of poking around on their forums. They, they actually have a Facebook site, and uh, which is not awesome. I, I really despise Facebook for things like this. I don't use it at all, but I did some poking around. It turns out that they do have a machine that you can purchase for a slightly larger sum of money that runs Lightburn out of the box. You don't have to use this software that they provide. And so if you do have the opportunity to spend the extra dollars, I highly recommend just using Lightburn because it's going to be a much more consistent user interface and experience that you're going to get across other machines that you might use. The other thing about the piece, the software that is just, uh, just um, mystifying to me, it's maddening actually, is it requires a dongle to run. Like I literally, I feel like I'm, I flash back to the 90s. Like I haven't... Re I haven't used a piece of software that needed a dongle to run in in at least 15 years, probably 20 years. And so I just I'm just scratching my head like what is that about? So again, the hardware I think is is really awesome. I think the free software they give you is a few notches above garbage. And so what I would say is spend the extra money, get the laser alignment dot, get the air assist. Uh, and get Lightburn and pay the 60 bucks for Lightburn. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some of the results I got with this machine. So I did a tremendous number of test engraves. I did not do any cutting. I didn't do any cutting because I didn't have any material thin enough to operate on the machine other than cardboard. And when I did try to cut the cardboard, I had a tendency more to um, catch it on fire than actually cut it. I think that's operator error more than anything, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the first uh, cuts that I did here. Uh, so I did a large series of test cuts here using a relatively thin font and an outline border just to, just to see how the machine was operating. I got very inconsistent results. This series of test cuts is what led me to align the mirrors. After I aligned the mirrors here on the backside, I started getting, I would say, more consistent cuts. But then, uh, <laughs> because I aligned the mirrors, I was getting much higher output, so I ended up burning through the cardboard a lot more than you would want. And so, I would say that uh, not a single one of these was really, truly successful. Now, moving on, I did get another piece of cardboard here. I started running another series of tests. I started getting a lot more consistent results. Uh, I was able to dial in exactly how I was cutting. And then I discovered a feature in the software that I missed apparently. It was not mentioned in the manual or if it was, I glossed over it. Uh, apparently uh, I was not using the engraving mode. I was using um, uh, some other mode. And so once I put it into engrave mode, I started getting better results for what I was looking for. Um, I, I did not try cut mode. I just tried the engrave mode. Once I got it into engrave mode, I really started getting really, truly um, good results. Um, I would say they are not nearly as good as the Ortur that I have over here, uh, but they are acceptable results for what I have right now. Now, given the fact that I don't really have material of a proper thickness, uh, and I really do think that I still have some alignment issues with one of the lenses, or at least the primary lens with some of the stuff that's on the lens. Um, that's a different issue. But uh, I got these two results here. I switched over to wood and I used the cardboard. These are, uh, this last cut specifically is, is well within the realm of complete acceptability. These last couples are completely acceptable as well. I will tell you that um, I did discover that by default the software has two steps uh, or two pixels per step uh, uh, by default, which means it skips every other line. <laughs> Why, I don't know, but I was getting ridiculously stupid results with engraving, engraving originally until I discovered that feature. I turned it to one pixel per step and I started getting much more consistent results in terms of engraving. Uh, and then I just dialed in the power depending on these different settings here. And so generally speaking, I was cutting between 100 and 150 millimeters per minute and a power level of around 14 to 15 set on the front panel here. And I was getting good results. 
I have not yet tried to increase the cutting speed and subsequently increase the power. I feel that uh, it was cutting at a fairly decent rate. It was not uh, really, really slow, so I don't think there's a big deal there. I did notice that changing the power on the front while it was cutting just a little bit does uh, dramatically affect the outcome. Uh, so I think modulating the speed might be better than trying to adjust the power, but who knows? There was a note in the manual not to run the laser uh, above 70% power because uh, it'll degrade the lifespan of the laser. Again, I'm cutting in the 15% range, so that's not close to 70, so I think it should last for a good long time. So overall, ended up getting good results out of the machine after uh, tuning it and tweaking it. So that's all good. All right, so we ran through the setup, we ran through the unboxing, ran through some of the pros, some of the cons. Overall, my opinion of this machine, well, uh, you know, I think it is a bargain. Uh, for what you get, you really do uh, get a really great laser machine uh, for a relatively small amount of money. This machine costs just a little bit more than some diode lasers, and it is four to eight times more powerful than those di diode lasers. Now, again, I don't want to go through it, but the, the software uh, could use some work. And so if you do have the opportunity to upgrade to the version that has light burn and some of the other features, I do recommend that. And the uh, other than that, they've got a number of accessories that you can buy as well, some upgraded laser um, lenses as well, the rotary machine and a couple of other things. So I think overall it, it was a decent investment. And so for a few extra dollars, you might be able to actually upgrade the machine uh, to get something that is just astounding compared to the cost of some other machines that are on the market of this size and of this power rating. So overall, I, you know, um, I had my issues with the machine, but I think it is a great value uh, compared to how much uh, you can pay for other machines that are on the market. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. Man, it took forever to get this video together. I had some bumps along the way, but at the end, I was able to get this unit working fairly well. I would not say that it is perfect, obviously, but I think with a little bit of tinkering, I can get this thing really, really dialed in. And so I plan on doing that. I will likely do some sort of follow-up video about it. And there are some maybe upgrades that I'm thinking about doing to it. I've seen on the websites uh, some things that are really cool to add to this machine. So nevertheless, uh, this is what it is today. This is what you get out of the box for a relatively low entry price of around $500. So I think that's pretty awesome. And, you know, in terms of value, I think this is uh, quite a value for what you get compared to some of the other laser diodes that maybe I have talked about before on this channel. All right, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, well, you know what? I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. But leave your comments down below. Tell us why so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, that's where I post pictures like this that we make future videos about. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. Now, some of you who've been watching my channel might also watch Hamilton. So it seems like Hamilton and I are also in a long-term relationship with Conan from Monport. Uh, so I have agreed to do this review of this laser at no additional cost to me. So they did provide the laser to me. All right, so here we are on day four of my adventure with the Monport laser. And um, let's go ahead and... No, let's, I don't think any machine that takes a person who is skilled more or less in this type of technology four plus days to get it operational and get mediocre results out of it is a good overall experience.